I want to bring in Democratic Congressman Adam Smith of Washington State. He's the top Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. We'll get to the dismissal of this impeachment trial uh, in a few moments. But first, would you vote for each of these foreign aid uh, policy bills that the Speaker, Mike Johnson, laid out, and then a possible plan to bundle them all together for the Senate? And can the House accomplish all of this by the end of this week? Yes and yes, I, I believe. I, I will certainly vote for the first three, Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. But the fourth bill hasn't actually been released yet. I think it's supposed to be released like uh, minutes from now. So I'll have to take a look at that. But I, I support this plan. I think the House will pass it. Um, and it will be bundled together as one coming out of the Rules Committee. That will be the rule. And then it will go to the Senate. And I've heard the Senate is prepared to take it up fairly quickly. Yeah, it looks like the Senate's got the votes to pass it very quickly as well. You warned it could take at least, what, two months to ultimately turn this convoluted process into law and that all of this is, quote, uh, boiling Ukraine to death slowly. Your words. How much is the delay hurting Ukraine right now on the battlefield? Well, look, it was seven months ago when we should have done this. And, you know, and gosh, two months ago when the Senate passed their bill. So the stalling and delaying that the House Republicans have done has put Ukraine in an incredibly perilous position. And it has also undermined the faith in the coalition that is helping them uh, to defeat Putin and to protect Ukraine. It's a huge problem. I mean, I'm glad that we now appear to have a path to get this done, but it is months later than it should have been. And the cost has been high for Ukraine, without any question. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, you heard. The House Speaker Johnson say he's not asking Democrats to get involved in a possible vote to oust him as Speaker. But if, uh, but he'll have just a one vote margin, as you know, one vote Republican majority margin in the House. Won't he need your party for help? And are you personally still willing to help him? I am, yes. Now, look, I, I am not under any illusion as a Democrat that I'm going to love the Republican Speaker of the House. All I ask is for someone that we can work with. And, and Mike Johnson, has he's kept the government open. He allowed us to pass the appropriations bill, so that process would go through a, a normal process. And now he's allowed us to have a vote on this incredibly important supplemental. And, and I think that, you know, it shows that he can, is someone we can work with, all right, in, in a respectable way. So it's not an endorsement of everything that Mike Johnson supports. Uh, but I don't think vacating the speaker would be good for the institution in this moment. And I certainly don't want to see what Marjorie Taylor Greene would try to put in his place. So, yes, I am prepared to not vacate uh, the chair. Interesting. That's significant indeed. Uh, President Biden, he faced more protesters over his handling of the Israel-Hamas war when he was out on the campaign trail earlier today. This aid bill does include humanitarian aid to Gaza. But what message would it send to Democratic voters who are upset, very upset, with U.S. support for this war to pass more weapons to Israel without any real conditions. Yeah, I mean, some Democratic voters are upset about it, but there's also well, what I believe is the majority uh, that still recognize the threat that Israel faces. I mean, Iran drove that point home last weekend. Israel faces a threat to their very existence, certainly from Hamas, but also from Hezbollah, Iran, the Houthis, various other proxies of Iran. So preserving Israel's right to exist is something that a majority of Democrats do support. I understand there's a divide in our party on this, but I don't think it's the case that the Democratic Party is all against Israel. We are in favor of getting to a ceasefire and in favor of getting more humanitarian assistance in and a long-term solution that ultimately gives Palestinians self-governance and a future. Uh, but that's not the same as abandoning Israel to the mercies of what Iran and Hezbollah would choose to do to them. Yeah, President Biden keeps saying U.S. support for Israel and security is ironclad. He keeps using that word, ironclad. On that point, Congressman, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said today that Israel alone will decide how it responds to Iran's weekend attack with uh, cruise, uh, with uh, cruise missiles, with drones. You've warned that Israeli retaliation would be a mistake. So how should the Biden administration handle this very, very delicate issue? Well, I think exactly the way they're handling it. Look, we proved that we would stand up for Israel if they were attacked last weekend. The coordinated response that enabled them to not suffer significant damage from that barrage from Iran 
was in large part because of Joe Biden's leadership in bringing that coalition together. But we've also made it clear that we clearly have opinions on how to get to a more de-escalated situation in the Middle East, and we're going to express those opinions. Look, literally, Prime Minister Netanyahu is correct. We are not going to fight any fight for Israel. They will have to decide what is in their best interest. But it's absolutely appropriate for us to say what we think is in their best interests, given our long-term alliance and, and the stakes that we have in it. And Israel responding at this point would risk a dangerous escalation that I think would place Israel at greater jeopardy, not less. Interesting. All right, Congressman Adam Smith. The uh, top Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Walt.